those of you who've been to these evenings before, either at London Business School or the last one we did virtually, will know already that it's it's usually Barnaby Winter himself who is the um, intercaluter. He's the one who, um, you know, is 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 quizzing the expert. Um, and, and I'm just lurking in the background. Today is different because Barnaby is the expert and I've swapped roles and, and I'm now going to be the one extracting as much of his expertise as I possibly can over the next hour. Uh, and to do this, I'm going to first quiz him for 30 minutes. I've got a questions I've always wanted to ask and here's the opportunity um, and and then we're going to invite a couple of uh, London Business School entrepreneurs, um, Mike Gamble and Guillaume Ponche, hope I got that right, um, both of whom are creating um, new drink brands um, and, and so we're going to be giving them a little bit of uh, real-time brand building uh, advice and, and hopefully that'll rub off onto, onto everybody else. Um, so Barnaby, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your business, some of the brands you've advised and the book you've written, um, you know, what, in other words, why you're the expert. So uh, I, I'm a, <clears throat> uh, thanks very much, uh, Jeff, for having me tonight. The, the, I'm a, a, a career long uh, marketeer. I did psychology as a degree at uh, Dundee University and then went to uh, did a postgraduate diploma in advertising marketing um, and then went into the advertising uh, industry world. Um, to initially work on Abbey National, then I launched uh, Fiat Ducato, Fiat Fiorino, Weber Carburettors, various other things. Moved as a result of having a CV that was very automotive, led to Ogilvy & Mather, one of the largest agencies in the world. To relaunch the Ford Sierra, Ford Granada, uh, I launched Argos, I launched Lipton Ice Ice Tea, I worked on Bird's Eye and various other Unilever products as well. I was there for almost six years before they moved across to Canary Wharf and I didn't like it over there so I went back into Soho and I launched Boots Opticians, Eurostar um, uh, and, and various other and Woodpecker Ciders and Red Stripe Lager was I, I launched that as well. Um, was headhunted from there to another agency uh, to launch Toshiba Home Cinema, First Telecom, work on the Sunday Express uh, and various other other projects and by this time I was then uh, headhunted to become the what in 1999 to become the youngest managing director of a top 200 advertising agency, primarily to launch E-Trade, which became the world's largest online broker, um, and work on Deutsche Post and Children's Society and lots of other charities from there. I bought that company in 2001 um, and then uh, rebranded Marie Curie Cancer Care and worked on that. Uh, found it really difficult that 10 years, very difficult, um, and spent 10 years reconfiguring the way marketing works to, to develop a fully integrated uh, strategic model to drive the agency and build uh, brands. Um, and I think, then I think you just qualified, uh, Barnaby. I think we, 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 get, we get that you're an expert. So. And then, yeah, and then in 2010, I pushed out on my own and ran an outsource model. So I now run a fully outsource model. So working with, with clients across all different spectrums now. I'm sorry. Yeah. So look, this is a conversation I've had, I've wanted to have for a long time. If you remember, we first met back in, I think it was 2017 at a Guild event at Trampery. And, and I was listening in on a very lively conversation at the time between you and, and the, actually the alum entrepreneur, uh, Corrado Akari, who, who with his pizza business had, had, had given all the food to the, to, to the event. Um, and right. it, it was listening yeah. in on that. It was the eavesdropping. I mean, until that time, I had always considered to be a brand as in a, you know, as a, as a dangerous economist, I had always imagined a brand to be just the sort of an implicit built in guarantee of quality that allowed you to charge a bit more than your, than, than your competitors. But it was actually eavesdropping on, on that conversation that sort of changed my mind entirely. And, and with it, all the inexpert ideas on how you, you build a brand. So that, that's it. So it's lovely to be able to have this conversation. The first question I'm going to ask then is, um, is, is you know, what's the definition of a brand um, and, and what job that it does? But before you get a chance to answer that, I thought what we'd do is to ask the audience um, and, you know, to, to ask them, you know, when I say brand, I mean, what's the brand of a brand? What's the words that come to mind? What's the job that it actually does? So take to the chat box. In the meantime, um, Barnaby is going to be looking at that, thinking, maybe uh, agreeing, maybe despairing at what you're saying. And, and he'll shout out a few words, which I will uh, commit to, to, to the whiteboard, um, which is just to the right of me. 
So I say, uh, Brand, um, what do you uh, understand by that word? Anybody want to contribute a few words or even shout it a few words? Okay, so we've got some words. Okay, well, let's get a few of these up then, shall okay, we? Okay, so we've got Colin, Colin is saying, it's the lifeblood of a business. Um, we've got from Jonathan, it's a promise. Uh, the sum of all experiences, thoughts, values a customer has and that are associated with a product or service. Sum of the, customer experience. Yeah, uh, entire ethos of the company. Oh, okay. Ethos of company. Yeah. It's an oh. identifying mark. Okay, so it's the mark, M-A-R-Q-U-E, yeah. or the brand. Oh, yeah. They, they, yeah, yeah. Um, don't you goodwill? It's just goodwill. It's simply goodwill. It's a perception and a guarantee of quality, the brand. Oh, not perception uh, and guarantee. Okay. Guarantee of quality. Not something I experienced at the pound shop, I have to say, but there you go. Uh, Recognisable <laughs> flavour. This is consistency. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yes, consistently not good. Right, identity, definition, identity, manifesto is another one here. Manifesto. Oh, and then there's a complete internal and external values of the company, ethos and pathos. External, okay. Values. Yeah, external. Wow. What it, mean, what it means, what it means to the consumer. There you go. That's it. Okay, well, let's leave it there. There's some things that you would have liked, some things that you dislike there. Um, yeah. What do you say the brand is? Okay, so I think I think one of the one of the fascinating things about doing this exercise, the one thing that, that's really critical is that we kind of do need a definition because there are lots of people who I, 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 I'm going to guess are running businesses, are owning brands, um, and are, in fact, um, rather have many, many different answers. It's why, why in many respects, the marketing industry um, is, is, is failing. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. Well, I, yep, we can see it. I can see okay, it. Okay, so when, when, I, when I became the youngest MD, I walked into to my first board meeting. And I said, okay, we, we've got this thing called the brand bucket. It's, um, and uh, I know what a bucket is. It kind of looks like one of these. And I get all that. What's a brand? And we had 148 person years of experience in the room. And uh, we couldn't answer the question. We filled seven sheets of A1 flip chart paper with different things. So we then spent three and a half months coming up with a definition of brand, which I'm going to share with you now because it's, it's been underpinning everything I've done. And I, I, we talk about brand as in this way, that it's every experience that affects the relationship between a product or service and its buyer which is similar to some of the comments that were made. But the key thing about this is, it's first of all, a, a, a true brand can only exist in the mind of a buyer because they've exchanged the one currency they have available to them for your product or service, which is time. Uh, don't be confused. Money is simply a reflection of time. You have to earn the money in order to spend it. So it's a pocket of time when you give it to somebody. So you're, you're, con you're conversing time. But the key thing about brand today is it's a relationship and it's a relationship that I value more than I value the money in my pocket or the time that it took me to get it. And if you can portray that through every experience, then what people will do is give you the money in their pocket. So actually brand is a whole relationship building piece, which actually a business is a set of commercial relationships. So what values your business is how many active commercial relationships you have at any given time. So uh, I mean yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm I'm getting that. So it's it's a relationship. You're really describing the brand as a what as a personality, as a character. Well, I think I think in the same uh, way you do a person. Yeah. So I think I think the the the, the answer is it is a, a set of values. So if you if you perceive personality to be a set of values, then you can call it a personality. But I right. I always talk about it as a set of values. And they are often contained in what is commonly known a value proposition. So you must have a value proposition. And, and the relationship is with the values in the value proposition rather than, rather than necessary. And of course, the, the buyer also has a set of values. So the whole business of, of marketing, building brand, building a business is to create the relationship between the value set of your prospects and ultimately your buyers and your own value proposition, which you must define going forward. Okay, so um, now th this, if we're not careful, I mean, from my perspective, it, it could become very philosophical and it's quite greedy in terms of you know, the, the extensiveness of what you've got to do and the dominance of the brand. But 
you know, I, I've, I've sat through countless venture pitches where the founder talks about building a powerful brand. You know, that's going to be it. The, let's say that on day two, after they've done the, that, that, that pinch, they, they, that pitch, they, they hunt you out. Talk us through your process. How do you help determine what the brand of an, in, by definition, an entirely new product is? So the first thing you, you, you must unearth is this value proposition. A value proposition is made up of really four sets of values. Uh, we, we define them all beginning with B just to make it simple to remember. But the first, the first set of values you must define is what are your behavioral values? What's your style of doing business? In a modern day, it is your style that people buy over and above everything else. And where does that style manifest itself? Well, in, invariably, if you're at startup mode, it normally sits firmly within the founder. Because ultimately, as human beings, we, we create systems and process that satisfy our own personal needs to, to change the world in some way. So it is, yeah. often our business is a reflection of our own values as a person. So we would always start with the values of the founding team, the board. And then actually, if, if I'm working with a big corporate, I would get the values from every individual in the organization yeah. uh, and add that into the, the value. Right, But in this case, it's an entrepreneurial company. So it's the founder. It's, it's, it's the two founders, the one founder, it, all the values sit on there. Because actually, when you, if you think about it logically, you know, they're the ones that are briefing the designs and the product selection and the sourcing and going around the world to find the best deals and everything. It's their perception of how the world works, which is being manifested through the product or service. So you must well, not... Well, I mean, just take that apart a bit. I mean, does that mean that um, there has to be integrity, integrity between the founder and the product? I mean, does that mean you can't have a hairy founder promoting a smooth product? I think that's that, that it makes it much more challenging unless the hairy founder has a smooth side to him. Yeah, so, um, so uh, um, yeah, I, I, it would, you, you, what you often find, and actually marketing is often criticised, or advertising is often criticised, of creating a value set that bears no relation to the business itself because they've found a niche or they've found a gap in the market. All of that is, is, is actual rubbish, to be honest. Mm. What you've got to do is you've got to take the, the beliefs and the values. So the first set of values is your, your behavioural values. The second set of values are what are your benefits? How are you going to make a difference? What do you give people when they, when, they, when they give you their money? What are you going to give them in return for their, their time and their energy they put into getting the money and giving it to you? So you must define your benefits. The third set of values is what do you want people to believe about your product or your service after they've had it? And that's, that's a, a Stephen Covey begin with the end in mind, second rule number two. Uh, from, a, from a brand point of view, you must define how you, what you want people to believe about you because that's your judgment criteria um, for, um, for whether the marketing or the brand work that you're producing is going to work. And then the final thing is, what do you want to be famous for? You must define that at the beginning. You just, what do you want to be famous for? So it's, it's your, your, the four Bs are your behavioral values, your benefit values, your belief values, and what do you want to be famous for? And okay. in the absence of some of those things, you've got to, you maybe have to invent it. Now, All right, must so here's another difficulty I've got then. With many of the founders I'm working with, you know, they, they, they don't necessarily have the answer to those questions. In fact, I would argue that it's almost, if they do, they're, they're what we call precisely wrong. I mean, what, what they're doing there is saying, this is what we want to be known for. But as we said over there on the board, it's the relationship that you have between your product and the consumer. So it's almost the consumer that are, or the user of the thing, which is helping to define the brand as well. And if that is the case, you kind of got to get out there and see what resonates yeah, before so the, you can, or maybe you should be investing much in the brand. Uh, okay, so so I um, I fundamentally disagree with that. Um, and that has not been my experience over the last 30 years. Um, right. Because what you need to do is you need to, to define your ideal prospect, right? And you then use marketing to only appeal to your ideal prospect. So actually you're using marketing and branding and all those sorts of things, which is quite different from brand, all the techniques to put people off coming to buy from you. Um, because they oh, don't- sorry, sorry. Repeat, repeat, sorry. You're using all that to put the wrong people from liking you. Yes, so you put the wrong okay. people off and only the right people are engaged by you because they share your values. And all, all business is about is, and marketing where it has a dominant role now is we buy from people we like, 
who are like us. That's what's changed in, as a result of the digital knowledge economy. In, in, when I came into the industry, there was little choice. So you got told by the brand owner what you were going to buy, right? Whereas today, you just have to, you, you just, well, 88% of all buying decisions start online. Yeah, whether it's B2B or B2C. So people are far more informed now that there's loads of choice. So inevitably, they go towards the brands that they like, that are like them. So it's really critical that you are very clear about what your value set is, because that's the thing they're going to come towards and say, I share your value set. I like your style. I see you're going to give me what I need um, to fix the problem I've already identified. And that is how you build a business. And that is your brand at work. Absolutely. That's how brand is working today. So we define the value proposition. We define psychographically the prospect, and then we bring them together using a thing called the brand. But you might be wrong. I mean, if you're trying to do this from day one, it, it, it might be that you're wrong, but it, it's your best guess. Yeah. So it, it, you can't be wrong. Uh, I, I appreciate, you simply can't be wrong um, because um, if you, if you sit down with your business plan, you'll find that there aren't those that, that bigger set of numbers on the business plan at the beginning. If you're telling me that if you need a thousand customers, you can't find that in 67 million people, right? Then you don't have a product that you should even be, you should, you should pack up and go and, and, and do something. All right, but I'm going to try and just push back one little bit more. I mean, go for what, it. We teach, what we teach, I'm not necessarily, necessarily saying it's right, but what we teach an entrepreneur is sometimes you put stuff out there and one of the initial tasks you're doing is to see who bites. I mean, you put it out and then you may have various different personas in mind. And then you're thinking and you're, you're doing a lot of studying about who it is who actually likes the thing that you're selling. I mean, another way of putting it is to say, um, you know, every product has a job to do and, and which people have that job that needs doing. And it's only after that that you begin to pick up the signals that you think, right, Forget them, forget them, forget them, do that. But that's not on day two, that's on day 20. Okay, so so um, where we would use that in, 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 in my world is we would use that to test creative ideas. Yeah, um, but all you're talking about there is research that is nothing to do with building a brand. It might inform what you do, but I, I can, I, I've got books on my shelves behind you full of catastrophes of people who've gone and asked people what they think Right. And they've said, oh, I want a, a Sinclair C5. There's a good idea. It's, you know, it's Henry Ford. If I asked people what they wanted, uh, they would have asked for faster horses. Right. There is absolutely no point in my, in my, in my experience of asking the punter anything at all because wow. they don't, yep. they, don't okay. they, they don't know. Right. They don't know that they don't know. And of course, if you're an entrepreneur or an innovator or you're bringing something new to the market, how can anybody have any idea what you're what you're talking about? They're just going to have no idea. And well, at later on, we come to, uh, you know, a non-alcoholic lager. Some people like non-alcoholic lagers, but I guess there's yeah, a lot of them that, out. I, I don't I don't disagree. But the non-alcoholic lager, the challenge with the non-alcoholic lager is it's not the only one in the world. So yeah, the yeah. methodology for building that brand has to be very specific. All right. So, so let's take us through the next bit. I mean, I've got the first of all, you have to define what this is. And if you're not, then you might as well lie over and die because you're never going to succeed. So you, you've defined what the brand is. What are the fundamental steps of building the thing? Then? I mean, how do you build? A, we're, we're specifically talking consumer brands here. I mean, be well, yeah, so I, 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 as, as you know, I, I don't see any difference between B2B, B2C, I to I, M to M. They're all the same. Um, so. So I, I, we, the methodology I used was first created for Saab in 1985. Uh, it was the result of 18 months research funded by Saab for, for a top 40 advertising agency. I bought it in 2001. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to tell everybody you're there. Yeah, that's the first thing you've got to do. Um, and the way to do that is to create some kind of brand iconography, something that people can familiarize themselves with. We receive 18,000 marketing messages every single day. I won't ask anybody to list out the 18,000 they saw yesterday. But to get any kind of familiarity, you've got to bring something in that. So, for example, I, I'm, I'm, I'm famous for this, right, I, in, uh, of loving this. Does that, now, you, you know what that is, don't you, Jeff? What is that? Yeah. What, what is it? or something or another okay what 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 does it stand for Fine, sorry what, what does it stand for though well 57 varieties of what of what jeff oh i don't know of stuff you eat out of the cans 
yeah, exactly. Okay, it's, complete, it's completely made up, right? Yep. Um, it's, it's something that H. J. Yeah. Hines made up, right? This is, is complete. This is the story of the fifty-seven. Now you can do that for your brand. I'm famous for these. Um, this is one of my proudest moments. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, um, and so you've got to create awareness. The second thing, the next thing you've got to do is you've got to then build an image around the awareness. And we call this image match. But what you have to do is you have to match to the image of your prospect. Don't expect them to match to yours. What a lot of founders do, what a lot of entrepreneurs do, is they create something that they like. Well, do you know what? How do you know how big your target market is? One, because only you like it, right? You'd have no idea whether other people. You have to design it in the mind's eye. So once you've done that, people go, "Well, I've heard of you. I like you because you're like me. I'm kind of relating to that." What is it you do? And at that point, you have to tell them what it is you do. Most people they list out the features of their product. They say it's got this in it and that in it and it does this. It's made this way. And, blah, blah, blah. and we'll come on to maybe talk a bit about that later on. And everybody goes, "Yeah, yeah, that's not my question." My question is not what, what is it that I do? Ah, what do you do for me is the question. It's just we drop the for me because we're all British and we don't, you know, in, in England, we don't use the for me. It's a bit rude. If you go to New York, they say, hey, what do you do for me? And you go, okay, I don't know. And you, you have to explain when you're British because you're not used to saying that. So you explain what you do for people. At that point to build the brand, you've now got them to heard of you, like you. You've told them what you're going to give them. They say, do you know what? I've got all the information I require. When I need somebody like you, I'll come back. And do you know what happens to them, Jeff? What happens to them then when they do that? That point in the mix, what happens? They say, I'll come back. What happens? They disappear. So what you have to do in the next brand building step is you have to run a test drive. You have to give them an experience of your value proposition. Immerse them in absolutely what you give people as much as you possibly can. Right, so I've got the, the, the iconography I get, I mean, it's kind of not just the logo, but it's, it's everything. No, it's everything, yeah. Okay, and, and the labeling and everything else. Yeah. But yeah, and, and the next bit, you know, about talk about benefits, not features, I get that stuff as well. But then you get into this immerse them. Well, that sounds really great, but how? how? Give, us, give us a few examples of how people have been immersed in things or you, well, okay. you know. so, so if if you've ever been into an apple store right it's like yeah. climbing inside an apple product yeah if, in fact if you go into any shop actually that's an immersive experience of that particular particular brand if you're buying a car you take the car for a run down the road if you go online and and, and buy a, a a product a video product whatever they give you a month free and then they switch it off yeah and then they and you say no you can't do that and this is fundamental now to brand building business building is you've got to give people a go because there's so much choice the reason is because this is where the relationship is locked you lock the relationship at this point up to that point they have a chance to go and see other people but when they're in a test drive they can right. only be in your car your shop your product right so then we get on to the i mean th these are examples of big big companies again with lots of resources yeah. to throw and then my next question i guess is what does this mean for an entrepreneur i mean yeah, we talk about guerrilla market research. We talk about guerrilla marketing. Is there such a thing as guerrilla branding? How do you do this on the cheap? Because, you know, most of the people I'm talking to have no money, but yet you've told them they've got to do this. And right. loads of other people are telling them they've got to do stuff as okay. well. So, you know, again, okay. curl up and die. Okay, so, <laughs> which is fair, which is fair. Okay, so um, we uh, there's a great phrase that one of my old creative directors used to have on this wall. We have no money. We shall have to think, Right. People with lots of money don't think, right? So what you need to do is to start to think about this. So the, the thing that you're looking for then is actually to spend the same amount of money as you would if you had the money on everybody, but you spend it on a few people. And what those few people are, they are either influencers or they're distribution channel partners. So in other words, what you do is you identify somebody who has access to your market and you immerse them in your value proposition and teach them to sell the value proposition into the people they know. So what you create is this kind of spider's web. And that's how you build a business very quickly. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it, it aspires to the same word of mouth principles that started with mar marketing 1.0 when we had markets. You know, it's people shut it out. So what you do is you equip with all the money you've got, a few select people to go and take your story to a wider community. And, and that can mean getting free press and things as well, I suppose, because that, that's the archetypal influencer. Well, OK, so the, the, the challenge you've got is that we 
if you're getting 18,000 marketing messages every single day, you're probably getting that from 15,000 different media. <laughs> so you investing time in, in, in PR, I, I'm not a big fan of PR, I have to say, which is what you're talking about, is getting publicity through the, that's a very, very risky thing, partly because they are more worried about what their readers want. They probably don't really reference you well. You're going to spend a lot of time. So I've got, I've got a, a client at the moment who managed to get a listing in Selfridges for his uh, natural uh, facial creams and things like that. I went into Selfridges last week. He's got two facings on the bottom shelf of a display that's about not using plastics, right? There's no way he's going to sell anything from that. The effort, the excitement of getting listed by Selfridges. Now, what he can do is say they're listed by Selfridges and use it in the rest of his marketing. Yeah. yeah? So it's, 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 it's a thing. But, but he's not going to gain any sales from that. And there was a huge, and I find a lot of entrepreneurs uh, are desperate to kind of get product placement and get all this thing. And they put vast amounts of energy in it and they get no sales from it. Instead of going down the local cafe and saying, will you sell this from behind the counter? Um, and 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 collect their email addresses and do this or whatever, yeah, and we'll build. Also, you lose primacy with the customer. That correct. Well, correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, well, look, so and well, why, let, let's move on. Um, uh, can you? <laughs> Judy says, can you test drive a life policy? Yes, um, you can. absolutely. Okay, there we go. So I'll let you have that conversation. Answer, Judy. Yes. Right. Let's move on to question. No, there can be more questions from the floor. So thank you for that, Judy. I hope that you have stimulated other people to. Um, uh, to 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 uh, use our chat box. Yeah, please, please, please in the challenge. I've never, yeah, I've never found a company. So that can I, I've just them. noticed that was from Judy to me privately, so I'm sorry about that. Anyway, question. Let's let's move on to the first founder. Okay, so I'm going to ask Mike Gamble to um, un. That's it. There he is. Uh, Hello. Now you might have noticed that Barnaby has been um, Barnaby has been swigging stuff, um, which looks very unprofessional. But I have to tell you that I've got some stuff as well, and it's lovely, and it's actually your stuff. So um, <laughs> I mean, we, we've had um, we, we arranged for Barnaby to get a crate of it. Um, I, I bought and drunk gallons of the stuff, uh, but everybody else is completely fresh to it. Um, so maybe you can tell us with a few slides uh, what it is you've got, and then we can get into uh, sort of a, you know a, a, a workshop in front of you. Hi guys, uh, I am Mike Gamble. Some of you may know my little brother Kit, who's still on the uh, the NBA right now. He may even be tuned in. I'm going to talk you through what I'm working on at the moment, which is Days Brewing, my non-alcoholic beer business. I'd love to spend ages talking to you about like what we've been doing, a bit about me, how we've got there. But I think the most important thing this is a branding workshop, right? So we're going to dive into a little bit about the opportunity and then how we've gone about creating this brand. Looking forward to having a conversation with Barnaby because we've created and now we need to start building. But just as a bit of background to the business opportunities we see it, I'm, ho I'm sure a lot of you in this, in this group, in this workshop will be familiar with this, but alcohol is playing less of a less role in our lives. If you look at ten, where we are now from 10 years ago, alcohol just doesn't have the same prominent role it is. People are kind of waking up and realizing that it's not so good for you. You look at Peloton, Huel, Headspace, um, Airbnb, people are more interested in traveling and doing more with their time and realizing that alcohol is too often slowing them down which means that no and low alcohol category in the UK is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to grow like gangbusters over the next five years. These are just kind of some numbers. I know we've got a lot of MBA students here who are excited to see this, but just to show that we've got a really big opportunity that, that we're going after. First question I always get asked is, how are you guys going to own alcohol-free beer? Because we're going up against a lot of huge branding monsters out there. You can see Bex Blue, Heineken Zero, Budweiser, Stella. I used to work for these guys. I used to work for AB InBev in their new venture creation team. So the guys behind Stella, Corona and Budweiser, and we have an amazing advantage in this, in this opportunity and that we're not, we don't have any of the, the legacy or anything to worry about being associated with those huge mothership brands. Everything we're communicating about days and being progressive and productive and really excited about being alcohol-free, these guys with their zero, zero offerings can't do it. I've seen them try and present it. Budweiser would eat you alive. The marketing manager of Budweiser will eat you alive if you try and say what, what we're saying about days and our alcohol-free beer business. And you've seen this across countless categories, right? You look at what Oatly's doing to milk. You look at what Beyond Meat's doing in the, in the, in the, in the meat space, Propcorns, Choni's Chocolonies. You, re you need real challenger brands with a real challenger mindset. And I'm really excited to talk to you a bit more about that, Barnaby, in a second, to really move a category. I fundamentally believe the alcohol-free beer category has actually been let down by the likes of Budweiser and Heineken because they're not allowing it to get to where they want to because they're terrified. Those businesses are fundamentally bit booze businesses. They get people drunk. 
That's not what alcohol-free beer does. So here's Days. Here's our brand. First and foremost, our audience. Days is for people who want to do more. More with their bodies, more with their minds, more with their days, and more with their lives. Days is for people who love great beer. We're a beer company. We love that it's the world's oldest social network. We love bringing people together, but we're tired of side effects from getting in the way of our days. We believe strongly that our days shape our weeks, our weeks shape our years, our years shape our lives. Quite simply, our days define us. So what's our brand proposition? We're 100% beer with zero, with zero alcohol. Food for good times, good days, and good tomorrows. Just diving into these in a bit in a bit more detail. What do we mean by good times? Everything that's great about beer, right? Bringing people together, having those amazing moments. We're passionate about great beer, great taste, great flavor, and great moments. But we're excited about good days. We're opening up beer to new occasions, that amazing sociable moment in places that it's not been before. We're helping our community drink more of what they love and love more of what they do. And we're excited about good tomorrows. We help people become better versions of themselves. We represent a brighter future for our community, for our beer, but also for the world. Okay. We call it beer for doing. This, this is the beating heart of our business. This is our value proposition. We're beer with going and playing five-a-side football later on. We're beer with waking up tomorrow morning feeling great. We're beer for doing everything that you want to do with your life. And this is our product, clean, crisp, and sessionable brewed to pair with you and your lifestyle. We, I'll talk about the product very briefly. We brew in Scotland, where I'm from. We use locally sourced natural water and barley and a unique alcohol-free brewing process. There's no alcohol whatsoever in our beers. We use 100% natural ingredients. We're vegan friendly and we're, and we're low calorie, roughly 50% of the calories of an alcoholic, of a, of an alcoholic lager, of an alcoholic beer. We've got our day's lager and our day's pale. We launched online a month ago and we're just building out our business now. Cool. I challenge you. Okay. What were you right, doing I'm going to stop you there. I had enough. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to have no time at all to discuss the, the frigging thing. And uh, we're all going to know what it is, but nothing about branding. So, Barnaby, what do you think about that? Yeah. So, listen, um, I, I think that it's a great story. I think you're doing lots of really well. One of the things that I think you're playing with a little bit too much, like a, we're looking on screen now, you've got the D on its side that looks like a sun. Uh, what you know what that's a different property to I think you've got 0% uh, as part of the do property so what I've what I've found about this is you're 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 playing with 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 ideas around this I, I'm, I'm, I, but one of the things that I find is really missing from the whole story and I think where where I just wonder whether you're you're missing something entirely the big beers the reason why they can create zero uh, percentage alcohol is because they already have uh, an experience in the market. People know what Bex tastes like. They know what Carlsberg, they know what they know, their session drinks, all those sorts of things. And the problem they have is that when they take the alcohol, the beer does not taste like Bex. It doesn't taste like Heineken. It just, it tastes like watered down versions of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing that strikes me about uh, about days at the moment and, and, and is a characteristic of how you build a brand in in the drinks arena is it's a hugely down to the taste. And you don't talk about taste at all. And I'm wondering whether you're missing a trick on it's it's the, the I, I'm drinking it now. Right. It tastes exactly the same as any other pale ale that I, I, I drink. It tastes the same. Yeah. Yeah. And the cool please thing about it, hear that. yeah, thank you. <laughs> nice yeah. to see you all evening. Well, no, the <laughs> it's a great client. He's not been paid for that. <laughs> uh, the experience was surprisingly not what I expected because when I drink uh, no alcohol drinks, they don't taste very good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and actually, I'm not prepared to compromise the taste. So um, I think there's a missing piece on on the tasting. I love the branding. I think it's simple. It's clean. I think you want to do that. You might want to. There's a, there's an indication of a language you know how innocent drinks created a language around yeah a around tone of voice and a tone of voice yeah i think i'd push harder on that i'd go yeah more on that, yeah because one of the things that, that, that you know that there are a number of techniques in the drinks world you, you can use provenance when we launched red stripe lager um uh, uh, we, we launched it into the gay community because they were this it was small scale and they were they were able to to tell everybody how great uh, 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 Red Stripe was. We mm -hmm. what we then found is a real conflict 
when we then introduced Jamaica as the origin of, of thing, because Jamaica, the, uh, the relationship between gays and Jamaicans is not the best relationship in the world, I can assure you, right? So there was quite some shift. So we established it through the distribution channel of the gay community, which at that, in those days was pretty, pretty covert. It wasn't anywhere mm -hmm. near as uh, over as it is now, more acceptable now. So it was a real underground drink, and then we exploded it out. So you need to create a, um, uh, an influencer exemplifier brand. So you've got this, your B Corp business, your, um, your, you should be really getting uh, people who are all about the new world. <coughs> a younger brand. Absolutely. It's a millennial brand. It's about uh, protecting the, the, the planet. All of those things I think you've got right. You really need to own that as a language. Yeah. Um, and really what do you do think, uh, Barnaby, agree what with do you, you think more. about the advantage that he has, that Mike has, Dave has, over the existing brands? I mean, the, the, the brands, you know, the, the non-alcoholic, um, you know, what is it, Bud Blue or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, can they ever succeed? Because they are trying to stretch a, a fundamentally different brand into this sort of new category. I mean, do, do you think that, you know, this is sufficiently disruptive that, that startups... Uh, like like days can ever own the space against. Uh, I, 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 no, listen. I, I think we can be quite pragmatic about that. If I was in Mike's shoes, I'd be building this so it annoys the hell out of the big brewers, right? And so they buy his little sorry ass out of the market, <laughs> a lot of money, and then he goes and uses that money to really live his value life, you know, the life of value that he wants. Yeah. So I, what I love about it is all of this this passion about the planet and everything. It's consistent with where I think the market is going. I think all businesses should be social enterprises from today. Forget the no profiteering. I think you can take the skill that you've got of building a business and do it on anything, which is beer has to. One of the other things that I thought was really interesting is this Scottish heritage. Yep. You, don't, yeah. you don't play that at all. I'd be tempted to, to maybe have a go at, at being, uh, you know, being more Scottish um, and, yeah. and, and taking the cues from, the Jack Daniels and the whiskey industry and stuff like that, and really own, because actually the, the Scots are a very appealing culture for most people, you know, they're, they're, and, and so they're probably, uh, there's a bit of me that says, okay, from a personality point of view, I might give it a little bit more Scottishness yeah. even at the moment, because I think that's kind of a missing missing piece. I think I I'd give the taste. I think it's, Go it's on. a good link with taste, and that's how I we see so. it, because when yeah. we push taste, we'll push water, malt, barley, provenance. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think the so reason just... I'm asking for a couple of other things. I mean, Mike, when we've been talking about this much earlier. You said you wanted this to be sessionable, which means yeah. that you're thinking about a whole pile of different occasions on which people might actually drink these things. And you've yeah. got you know, people walking through the cornfields and stuff. Well, you know, maybe that's the occasion. But Barnaby, when I spoke to you about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, we said about, you know, this is the... Uh, the, all the, the, the different sessions and the times and the occasions, you were a little bit dismissive of that. And you said, no, actually, guess what? It all comes down to taste. Uh, yeah, and I, I, it, it is absolutely the taste. Um, I think the... The, the, I don't I don't see that I'm going to have a session and then I'm going to go and play five side football right I'm going to have a belly full of liquid that is just not going to happen it's still got liquid I, you know me drinking eight bottles of this and going mm. playing football it's just the concept of that what I do get however is that I play football I then drink for three hours and then I drive home yeah now that's yeah. cool yeah now that's kind of cool so I I think I'd be looking to position this in 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 the um in 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 as part of your ongoing lifestyle, yeah, in everything you're talking about, making your days amazing from beginning to end, but not missing out on the taste of a great beer, a nice cool beer, yeah, straight out Completely. of the cooler, you know, don't you don't need to to compromise on that. And I think one of the things that's that's increasingly going in the in in the in the vegetarian, the vegan area. I've got three daughters, all of them are vegans, right? Yeah, and. If I have to sneak meat in to the house, <laughs> um, you know, under the, under under the guise of something else, right? But actually, the taste experience are getting better and better and better because yeah, that's the, yeah, that's what indeed. people want. They don't want to notice that they're not eating meat or they're yeah. not eating spices. Okay, they're not. Look, we're meat. almost at an end. One other thing I particularly interested me about the, a number of your slides here is that you had people carrying crates of the stuff, boxes of the stuff. Yeah. Was, was that intentional that you're trying to say, you know, as, as you've said to me in the past, you're, you're, you're trying to get people to, to, to not just have one 
and and then that's enough. You're you're trying to get over the message that this is, you know, what 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 are you? Well, let yeah, me turn it. It's, what it's, are you trying to say by having your box of stuff? Sure. So first first of all, it's a nod to the fact that we are primarily a direct consumer digital business. So. At the moment, the main thing we do is sell boxes of beers to consumers. I was out in the streets today selling it. So it's a nod that we have that, that D2C business, which is amazing to be building a beer business online and not selling a beer to a wholesaler, to a retailer, to consumer. Selling a beer direct to Barnaby is unbelievable. So it's a nod, it's a nod to that, that we want to get people in the habit of ordering a, bo- ordering a box of days. It's also, honestly, when we did the photo, when we were doing our photo shoots with all our bottles, everyone just fell in love with the box and was like, that box branding is, is brilliant. It's so different, right? Like order a 12 pack of Heineken right now. It'll come in a crap box covered in rubbish tape. Our box is all renewable. Uh, we use bamboo tape that's that's kind of good for the planet. So it's a nod to it. It's, it's good branding. Okay. It's good so in fact, box. Barnaby, that takes us right back to the very first conversation you and I had about Corrado and his pizzas. Because yeah. you said, you know, how can you be selling this pizza, this beautifully light pizza in this ghastly box? Yeah, you correct. Know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Having yeah. said that, I would I would commend you to watch as many early Coke ads as you can bear to watch, right? Because in all of the early Coke ads, there is that amazing drinking moment where you see the top coming off and somebody mm. hot thing just drinking and you you want to rush out and buy a Coke as yeah. when, you, when, when you see that, right? I the think picture. I'd be building in much more from the bottle, you know, that just... Yeah. That, mm, mm, mm. You just still like that. I'll just screenshot that, Barnaby. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just, it's all being really recorded. I, I, okay, look, I've got to stop us there. I've yeah, got to stop us there. Um, great feedback, Barnaby. Really appreciate Mike, it. Mike, um, w- w- when you go off, there's a few people who've uh, on the on the chat box have asked questions that you might like yeah. to answer them privately. And for goodness sake, don't miss the opportunity to just stick up your web address so people know where to get. Yeah, I'll send around. I'll call. send around a web address and I'll send you guys a discount code so everyone in this group. Oh, can even better. Off. There's your immersion, yeah, even if they're not the persona who you actually want to be seen yeah, drinking. Anything for the obvious. Okay, so thanks, Mike. And we're going to switch over to Guillaume now. Uh, Guillaume, with a very different type of fluid. Uh, Where are you? There you are. Do you want to say a few words? I mean, Barnaby, again, has taken delivery of a box of this stuff and he's he's done his background research. So, uh, but but again, tell us a bit bit about about bamboo water and what you have in mind uh, for it for us. Sure. So, hi, everyone. Thanks a lot. So, I also have a a few slides that I can share. Let me do this quickly. All right, so hi everyone, Uh, my name is Guillaume. I'm the founder of uh, Juno Bamboo Water. And before this, I was uh, an MBA student at London Business School. So yeah, what is is Juno Bamboo Water? So Juno is the first bamboo water in Europe. It's uh, a soft drink that is made with bamboo leaf extract, yuzu juice and sparkling water. So in terms of taste, it, it tastes a bit like herbal tea with, a, with notes of citrus. Uh, importantly, it's sugar-free, it's very low in calorie, and it's uh, packed with natural antioxidant uh, given the, um, the bamboo leaf extract. Um, and lastly, it's made in the UK, it's plant-based, and it's sustainable for uh, two reasons. The first one is the ingredient that we use, so bamboo, which uh, regrows after harvest, and it needs uh, no uh, insecticide, no pesticide, and very little uh, water to, to thrive. And the second aspect is that uh, we are partnering with um, a nonprofit organization. And for each bottle that uh, is enjoyed, we essentially make donation to reforestation projects. Um, and then the origin of, of um, this product is because before my MBA, I actually lived in, in Hong Kong for five years and travel um, across Asia quite a lot and notice that bamboo leaf were commonly used um, in traditional medicine shops uh, to heal the body. So this is why I, I made a small uh, hint to, to Asia in, in the logo with this J and then uh, Juno, uh, which comes from June, which means uh, pure, clean and simple when talking about a liquid. So in terms of branding, um, we did a bit of research over uh, the summer with uh, four amazing, uh, sorry, LBS uh, students. And what we noticed is that um, people expect from their drink to um, feel healthier, um, to get a boost in immunity, and somehow, as we can see here, uh, to get a bit of better uh, mental wellness. 
So that brought us to uh, our key message for Juno, which is all about mindful hydration, which essentially means um, taking care of our, we call it our three homes, which are planet, body, and mind. So we want to sell um, a product that is actually good for your body because it's uh, full of antioxidant, it's low in calorie, it's sugar-free, and um, it's helping you uh, to detox your body uh, given the, the bamboo leaf extract. Then it's good also for your mind because uh, we made the link uh, with bamboo, so nature, calmness, meditation, and then the last thing is to be good uh, for the planet as well, because uh, as I said previously, uh, the ingredient that we use and the donation that we make. So that, that is our uh, branding. In terms of pricing, so we did um, a bit of research as well. So we are more on the upscale part of you know, functional beverages, um, we are uh, on the right hand axis um, part of this axis, which allows us to sit uh, slightly um, above in terms of pricing. So around 2.6, 2.7 pounds. In terms of promotion. So yeah, so I can quickly finish with this. So promotion, all of this branding is es essentially reflected in um, our social media for now, uh, which I invite you to, to follow if it's not the case yet. Uh, it's Water, And uh, we target as well a magazine. So two weeks ago, we were featured in uh, The Guardian. And um, we're in talk uh, with other magazines like uh, Vogue magazine and Condé Nast Traveler uh, who were um, interested in the product. Um, so yeah, and um, Mike mentioned about discount code. Uh, if you're wonder wondering, this discount code here is still working. So you're welcome to go on bamboo-water.com and, and have a check. Okay, well, you're welcome to send that link around afterwards. So um, Barnaby, a few things to pick up there. Obviously, uh, it's fluid. It's stuff you pour down your throat. But, um, you know, they're the, they're, they're the um, comparison with days. Well, not quite stops because it, it, it gets into the... Um, uh, it, it gets into the Save the Planet stuff as well. Sorry, I shouldn't be so dismissive. But uh, why, why don't you take over before I dig myself any deeper? <laughs> Listen, great. Do you want to stop sharing? You know, yep. You know, uh, yep. Thank you. Oh. Um, uh, so, listen, the, uh, you're, you're exhibiting a classic example of a mad inventor. Yeah. Um, what you've done is you've created a product that is packed full of uh, rational values. Mm -hmm. um, and everywhere I go on your brand, it's all about rational values. The challenge you've got is that people don't interpret your rational values in the same way as you do, because you've been in Hong Kong and you've seen it. And you know, So, for example, you call it bamboo water, for example. Now, if you use the word bamboo in, in the UK, I can assure you it does not elicit anything that's culinary, that's edible right, at any stage. There are very few pandas, I think, in the UK, and uh, um, and very few people, would they, they might use them as canes, or they might use them for furniture, or something like that. So actually, from a, a taste point of view, you're shifting people miles away, in my opinion, from what could possibly be something. So the first thing I'd be looking to do is to do, spend much more time talking about the leaf, because it takes you back to tea. Now, in Britain, we're a tea, we're a tea-loving uh, 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 culture mm -hmm. um, and so therefore if you start to if it's called bamboo leaf water then then I'm going oh, okay that's interesting because it means something different which is of course where it comes from so the other thing of course is that it's water right so water okay so you're taking me into a whole uh, previous experience and this is really important when you're creating a language around the brand mm -hmm. is that you have to interrogate every single word you use because mm -hmm. you have to wonder what the consumer, what the buyer has in their brain wired in against that word. Because otherwise what you'll find you're doing is you're spending all of your time saying, no, I don't mean bamboo, I mean bamboo leaf. And I don't mean water, I mean a flavored drink. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I, you, you, you don't mention anywhere as far as I can see the fact that it's lightly sparkling. I don't, you know, lightly sparkling drinks are entirely different to water. Water isn't naturally lightly sparkling. So you're adding something to that and stuff. And then it, so what that then changes is the drinking experience. The thing about adding bubbles is it creates a mouthfeel. 
So therefore, I want to I want to understand what the mouthfeel is. I don't get that from anything or because I'm I'm stuck in. And then, of course, the moment I look it up, there's the list of a hundred things that I, I wrote down. Um, it, it um, the great thing about uh, about uh, uh, bamboo leaves is it it it, it uh, reduces male infertility. It balances your cholesterol. It cuts out cancer. It makes your hair better. You know what? I just want a drink, actually, that's refreshing and and tastes great and might do me a bit good. So my worry for you going down this this mindful um, this mindful thing is you should be very intellectual. Yeah, it's it's um, around a drink. Yeah, yep. and 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 my worry that you're, you're you're heading down that way and people are just not going to buy into it unless you're only going to sell through Holland and Barrett and nowhere else. Mm. Yeah. Um, so you, would, you would bring it back closer to something that they know, um, in that case, bamboo leaf uh, tea instead of pure bamboo water. Yeah. And do you know what? The one the thing that I got really excited about when I was going through is this this Asia link. Right. <laughs> Are you giving me a little taste of Asia here? Because if you're giving me a taste of Asia. Right. That's what I want to drink. Yeah. I, I, I want I want I want to uh, and I don't know whether I want to be transported to to uh, you know fancy restaurants in Singapore or you know or, or something like that and I want to live the life of luxury that the people who are in the know in Asia this is what they do and this is what they drink so actually I'm buying into mm -hmm. a part of the lifestyle where the the smart people have gone to bamboo leaf and are using that because of all the health benefits. I, 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 you know, that all comes down the track. But to lead with that, I just, I, would, I don't know, I felt a bit... Do you think, I mean, going through your four parts of the process about the value proposition and, yeah, the, yeah. and, and the persona, do, do, you, do you think that um, uh, Guillaume here has got the, um, the persona? Um, accurate. I mean, he, he he said who that is. Does, does, does that resonate with you? No, it, it, it doesn't because it, it comes. Yeah, what 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 is always a challenge for any entrepreneur is, uh, and we we talk about it. When when you're building your brand as a bucket, you're mm -hmm. stood on the inside at the bottom, looking at your amazing bucket that you built around you. What you've done here is you've described your amazing bucket, right? The problem is I'm outside leading a life and you're shouting from the bottom of your bucket, say, come in here and join me. And I peer over the top and I say, why are you down there? And you say, because I've been to Asia and there's extracts and this and blah, blah, and the citrusy table and it's antioxidant. And I'm going, OK, what, what's that next to you? Oh, it's a bottle of my, my stuff. Oh, so it's a drink you sell, right? I haven't got that. I didn't get that because you're, you're, you're the mad inventor describing your amazing invention. So I think. I think I'd be thinking about, well, actually, what do you want to do? Do you want to give people a, a, a taste of Asia? Uh, do you want to give people a, a flavor of a long life? Yeah, because they're less likely to be confronted with a, a, a healthier life. But would, are you going to give me a, a, you know, what, 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 if I drank this regularly, you know, what would it, difference would it make to my life? What would it give me a flavor? And I'm, I'm missing that in totally from, from the brand story. So I, I would be going right back to the, to the value proposition and <laughs> saying, you know, I'm really upping the Asia connections, the leaf, the beauty of the leaf. So, I mean, no, just the last few minutes, Gil, I mean, you're, you're obviously selling bucketfuls of this stuff as well, and it tastes great. Um, so what, 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 what is it do you think that people are buying? Uh, I think um, they like the innovation part of it because UK is a market that, that likes uh, innovative drinks. Um, so th they're generally interested about, you know, trying a new product. But I guess uh, Barnaby is right. Maybe I should, um, you know, reposition a bit uh, on, on the core value of the drinks. Um, yeah, uh, and the good thing is, it's good to have this feedback now that I did my first batch of production, uh, rather than you know two years down the line. Uh, and I'm actually doing a re a slight rebranding um, soon from the first packaging and, and the first uh, story. So it, it's very useful to you know have this kind of feedback, and we'll um, definitely um, include them in the new in the new uh, in the new story. Fantastic. And I see we've got a strap line for you up on the chat box. It says. Yeah. Uh, Juno, what longevity tastes like? Or, or, or flavor of a long life. It's, it's great, you know. Flavor, it's, it's, yeah. flavor of a long life. Yeah. What a yeah. wonderful. Okay, lovely. Uh, see, lovely. People are getting, see, people are getting that. See how people are reacting to that and go, okay, that, that, yeah. I'm buying into that. Yeah. Yeah. That's very.
Yep. It's kind of look after myself, look after my drinks, look after everything I eat, mm-hmm. everything I put into my body, make sure that's right. You, there's a whole, there's a whole territory and then give it the Asia flavor. Yeah. 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 That makes a lot of I mean, sense. It's really interesting. He almost goes back to the Cobra story, doesn't it? Which is, you know, it's beer, but he managed to make it Indian, even though it's, yeah, it's probably just Europe, Europe is made in Slough like everybody else, but somehow or another he managed to put this aurora around it. Yeah, and I think one of the things now we're not able to travel right now, and we might not be able to travel two or three years. Mm-hmm. There's, a good, there's a good option to sort of you know uncap a bit of Asia, you know, and 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 live a longer life, and you know stuff. Yep. I don't know. You yep, know, yeah. it's, it's, it's some it's some cool bits there. I, I think it's right. lots well, to work well, with. Well. Lots to work Marvelous. with. Marvelous. Um, okay. okay, well, uh, Guillaume, thanks very much. I, f- I hope you found that was useful. And thank you for very being our, our second guinea pig of the evening. Well done. Um, do post your link up to yeah, so the people buy uh, six packs of yours as well um, and know where to find you. And we hope very to nice. see a little spike in sales as a result of today. Um, there's been a, a few people who've come up and asked various questions so you can answer them privately as well. Um, but, you know, we're, we're now at um, exactly 60 minutes after we started. And so we are virtually at a time when we're going to be finishing as well. Um, you know, Barnaby, any last few words of wisdom, you know, things that I haven't asked you that you would love this audience to to know? Yeah, I think I think the one thing I'd love everybody to, to take take out of this is there is a the, the concept of branding and brand are entirely different whoa um and branding is is simply the the clothes that you put your brand in um so it's your your look and feel your logo all that sort of thing your brand is an asset in your business it is the bit that you sit with the investors, you sit with your partners, you sit with your suppliers, and you say, what we are doing is we built a machine that commercializes relationships. And that is your brand. Um, that everything is working. We've understood what our value is. We've understood who we're going to sell it to. We're only going to sell it to those people, no one else, everybody else. You can't come in. Your name's not on the door. You know, all of that, make that work. And when you put that in front of people, people say, that's interesting because we can scale that by giving you more money, by going to new territories, new mm. countries, new markets, new things. That's what you're trying to build as an entrepreneur, right. try and serve yeah. to everybody. And, yeah. and as we know, for anybody raising money, what an investor wants to see is that you have already shown the logic. Correct. I put some money into this and this happened. Correct. Therefore, the multiplying factor is if I put 10 times as much money in, you're going to get 10 times. Have this and, and branding, as they say, I came back to the very beginning that, you know, we get so many people who stand up for pitches and say they're going to be a brand. Yes. And, and, and then and, they show and a then, fancy, fancy picture and a fancy logo and go, look, you know, I put the Asia in the J. God, my mother wouldn't spot that. I don't know about anybody else. You know, it's just, okay. it's just you know, right. it's branding. So that's the one thing I would, I would want to leave people with. Oh. Don't muddle up branding with brand. Lovely. Okay, well, look, we're there. Um, I got to just, um, uh, um, Rabina, if you're around, could you just put up the, um, the, the, the blog uh, name, our startup blog name? Um, and if anybody wants to write anything for that, we are into articles, and that includes Guild members. Anything that you think that the population uh, at large of, of uh, potential aspiring wannabe entrepreneurs might like to know and you'd like to share that with them, do get in touch with myself um, and, we can, uh, and, and we can convert your ideas into, into a blog piece. In a couple of months' time, do come back, tell us what you thought about it, tell us what you'd like us to explore next time. And next time, as I say, Barnaby will get back to his familiar role of the interrogator. But for this evening, thank you. That's been amazing.